Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Healing, you are welcomed in this place. Deliverance, you are welcomed in this place. Restoration, you are welcomed in this place. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Today, 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 I'm coming just to say, number one, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Number two, in my spirit, I keep hearing the word motives, 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 motives. What is your motive? What is your motive? When you get up and hit the floor every day, when you start and establish your goings for the day, what is your motive? Hallelujah, somebody. What is your motive? Is your motive today to get it how you live? Is your motive today to be the, you know, the best person that you can be? Is your motive today to be the best parent today? Is your motive to be um, successful in business today? Is your motive today to thrive? Is your motive today, hallelujah, to be the best you that you can possibly be? Hallelujah. Is your motives, hallelujah, Things that are for the good and for the edification of your home, for your mental, spiritual, and for your emotional well-being. Motives, motives, motives. Let us discuss motives, okay? Motives. I have a whole lot of um, topics that are literally filtering through me right now. And some of these topics, I have to differentiate in between what I do as far as a prophetic nugget, what I do in regards to Say Yes with Sharita, and what I do in regards to Candid Conversations with Sharita. Candid Conversations, I will be talking about different topics. Um, say Yes, I... Um, I'm doing more teaching, making sure my motive for say yes is to make sure that everybody is right with God, especially with COVID-19 out here. With COVID-19, I'd like for everybody to be right spiritually with God and in a spiritual mindset of repentance and love and with faith and believing in God so that if we are repentant, if we have our minds and our hearts focused on the things of God, our goal of, you know, getting to heaven in the end will be achieved, okay? Will be achieved. The Bible, and it technically says two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. So basically that is in regards to like, if the rapture, rapture was to come today, Will you be taken or will you be left? That is my motive as a prophet is to follow the guidelines that is based in the Bible and to share them with everybody so that people can redirect themselves to line up with God and so that they can get their minds and their hearts right because God is going to come back and he's going to search the reins of your heart. And when he comes back to search the reins of your heart, is he going to say, your motive was to be like this person on television. And I know you're not your works are of iniquity because you are... Um, serving this person and that person is your God, or this thing is your God, this group of people is your God, this drug is your God, this habit is your God. So I'm here to to be a voice that is crying out in the wilderness saying, let's assess our motives, let's assess our mindsets, let's assess our actions. Let's assess the things that we say, the things that we do, the things that we uh, basically sh do in front of our children. Okay. Let's assess our motives. Every day we wake up and God gives us a brand new mercy, a brand new mercy. So as God gives us a brand new mercy, he gives us the choice to choose to leave negativity and to leave negative situations, circumstances, and environments alone or 
behind us and say, Lord, I'm about to press on to something bigger. I'm about to press on to something better. Because see, a lot of people listen to, you know, certain music. And, you know, I don't know if anybody watched the Players Club, but in the Players Club, which was technically a movie about a stripper. She says, make the money and don't let the money make you because her purpose for doing what she was doing was to literally pay her way through college, not to be seen, not to um, become famous in doing it, but to get money, the ends to justify her means so that she could get her necessity necessities paid so that she could ascertain another goal that she had in life. So this was just something that this person was doing in this movie um, uh, while, during a time of abiding and a, a, a time of transition. So her motives was to work this job so that she could basically not come out of college in debt. Okay. So we watch TV, we watch movies, and sometimes we become motivated by this person. So some people get motivated by the factor that they see this dancer or they see these dancers and then they see the money and they see uh, what's going on. But you don't know how long a person does uh, a certain thing and you don't know how long they've worked at generating a clientele or have, how long they've generated a following and how long they've done what they were they do in order to receive with the, the 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 dues that they have to pay to get to where they are sometimes it's not um a positive road or a path that takes and sometimes it's a lot of painful hurtful ordeals that get people to certain routes in life you know i've heard certain stories of certain individuals and it's like wow they went through that oh my god you know so it's just like but what are your motives what are your motives your motives should I can't tell anybody what their motives should be, but when we are choosing, making choices and choosing certain things in life, we've got to take time to focus and say, okay, how is this going to affect me in the long run? What are my outcomes going to be? Because if I go out here and do this, am I going to need security? Am I going to need this? Am I going to need that? Am I going to need the other? And what happens if this happens? And nobody thinks about maybe, uh, you know, drugs, drug addiction, and things like that as pertaining to certain lines of work, certain industries. And these things have adverse effects, not just on the person, but a lot of people, once they have reached a certain age in life, they have children. So this is going to have not just effects on me, but this is going to affect my children. This is going to affect other relationships. So before I make this choice, what is motivating me? What is the purpose behind it? And did I think this through thoroughly? Okay, we have some people that will get out here where well, I'm going to work two or three jobs and I'm going to basically justify the same means. I might be a little bit more tired, but working two to three jobs may be safer. It may be healthier and it may be more conducive in the long run. Hello, somebody. So today I'm just saying and I'm coming to you before you do things. When you start up a business, when you start up a business, you have got to have a business plan. OK, you've got to plan out your business plan. And as you plan out this business plan, you've got to say, OK, what is my motives? Am I trying to start up this business? because I see someone else doing this. That someone else that is doing it may have been doing it for a lifetime. That person may have multiple connections in the community. That person that is doing a certain job may have a different networking system. So here you think, well, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to do this because I see this guy doing this and he's making a whole lot of money. Well, sometimes in, in order for you to get to the whole lot of money, sometimes you have still got to work another job, have a plan B as you build up a clientele for whatever it is, whether it's painting, whether it's a plumber, whether... um. 
I had one person last year to pop up with car detailing. Now I have like three or four people on my page that are doing car detailing. And I started off with one person doing this. So what I'm saying is what is your motive behind doing whatever it is that you're trying to do? Because some people, just like I said, some people have the network to have the clientele in order to do it. A prime example, like a lot of people say, oh girl, they making money hand over fist and they, you know, in the hair industry, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing the other. Well, in order to make money hands over fist, hands over fist inside of the hair industry, you've got to know how to do hair. Can you cut hair? Can you fade hair? Can you blend hair? Can you color hair? Can you dye hair? Do you know which products to use on multiple textures of hair if they come in to sit down and say, oh, well, I would like this hairstyle? Well, sometimes you might have to say, well, you know what? That's a different texture of hair and your hair is wiry and that hairstyle that they have is a more coarse grade of hair. You've got to understand and be able to articulate people to people all the way across the board as to what to do regarding certain situations and circum certain circumstances. And you also have to have a knack or a niche for the art of hairstyling. You know, nobody wants to go into the hair salon and it's just like, okay, well, I just want to be a hairstylist because my neighbor is doing hair and she making all this money and this, 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 and this. And, you know, well, the main thing is, is well, they, she got a, a car. She got a nice car, you know, this, 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 and this. Well, you know what? The first things first, do you know how to do hair? You know what I'm saying? Because you might be able to go and get a job making just as much money that as a hairstylist working as a legal aid, period. You might be able to go to school to become an STNA or LPN and still make the same amount of money that a hairstylist is made. It's what you do with your money and how you manage your money. So what is your motives? Are your motives for doing things based on what you see other people doing or is your motives coming from the desires of your heart. So I was wondering, I said, Lord, I want a scripture to go with this. I really want a scripture to go with this. So I'm going to Psalms 34. I'm going into Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Psalms 34 is one of the best uh, scriptures. Is it 34? Uh, no, maybe it's Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Let's go to Psalms 37. Psalms 37. I know it's Psalms 30 something, so we're going to hit the Psalms until we... Uh, yes, Psalms 37 is it. It's my Psalms 34. Yeah, Psalms 34, I was reading that for something else. But if we go to the book of Psalms 37, and then I'm going to end tonight because I want your motives to, to be based upon your heart's desires. I want your motives to, or God wants your motives to be based on your heart's desires, based on what is going on and manifesting inside of you. Because in the book of Psalms 37, it says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart, thine heart. So what is your motive? Because God is saying that he's got you. God is saying that he's going to bless you. God is going to say, if you delight in me, I'm going to delight in you and I'm going to bring some things to pass. But but I'm going to parenthetically part there and say the first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, and thy soul. And to basic love is the first commandment. So we've got to focus on God and then we can't have any other gods before him. So when we are searching the reins of our hearts, our motives have got to be God centered. And sometimes you got to wake up. OK, God, you know what? I'm about to do this your way. So. When I do this your way, I'm going to need to, you know, just I'm looking for something new. I'm looking for something innovative, you know, because a lot of people will say, oh, well, there's nothing new under the sun. Well, I saw Apple Pay and I saw somebody go up to the gas station with an Apple Watch on, touch the thing and pay for their items 
at the gas station with a watch. So invent something new on the wheel. Invent something new on the wheel. So you've got to search the reins of your own heart and say, Lord, put a witty invention inside of my heart. Okay, because I want something new. I want something innovative. I want something leading edge. I want something. Um, I, I want a business. You know, so first of all, you've got to place it before God. And then once you place that thing before God, and sometimes you might have to try out a few things. OK, but what are your motives? What are your motives? Are your motives to do what you see other people doing? Are your motives money or is, you know, what is your motive? Motive, 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 motive. So my motive for serving God and for doing a prophetic nugget is to say, hey, you. You over there. The God that I serve is love. God wants you to delight in him so that he can bless you, so that you can be pressed down, shaken and overflowing with love, overflowing with blessings, overflowing with joy, peace, happiness and all of the things that he has for you. So that's my goal and that's my purpose. That's my motive. OK, money as pertaining to ministry is not my motive. My motive is to say, hey, you can me and God get your attention for a hot second. Okay. Number two, I always ask people to repent. You know, God, forgive me for anything that I have done that is outside of your will. Number three, I always redirect people to love, to focus on the things of God and to point them to him because my goal and my objective is to let you know that I don't want nobody to die in sin and to die without God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Because the Bible says mm -hmm, narrow is the gate. Hallelujah. Narrow is the gate. Okay. Narrow is the gate. Hallelujah. And very few travelers will you see on the path and on the road to heaven. Okay. I'm just here to tell you my goal and my objective is to, okay, we're going to thrive while we are here on this earth. We are going to live. We're going to be blessed and we are going to be highly favored, but I'm going to wake up in the morning and say, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for this day. Hallelujah. Okay, Lord, show me, mm -hmm. give me a big idea. Give me a big invention. Show me how to do it. Position me. Okay. My motive is to encourage everybody. My motive and my intent is to share. Okay. My motive and my goal and my objective is to point you to the good shepherd, which is God. Okay. Cause it says the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So my motive is to get you to not be in want of anything. I, my, my motive is to tell you that God is love. Okay. So if you're searching for love, I'm going to need for you to pray to God and say, Lord, <laughs> send it right now in the name of Jesus or send it. Okay. But you've got to watch and you've got to be prayerful and you can't go about everything in a thirsty capacity because haste makes waste. Okay. Instead of being in toxic situations, circumstances, and relationships, we got to get to a point where we say, well, you know what? Nah, this might not be for me because you didn't show me right out the gates that this is not conducive, that this is all bad, that this is toxic. You've showed me right out the gates that you are a bad person. Okay. So in that, what are your motives? Motives. It's all about motives. What motivates you? Hallelujah, somebody. What drives you? What encourages you? What is your motive? Motive is the root word for motivate. Okay. What motivates you? What drives you? And how can God get you there today? Okay. I'm just here to tell you what can God do for you to get you there today? And that is the key. So number one, I always tell everybody to repent. I always tell everybody to obey the word of God. Find the Ten Commandments, find you a basic prayer and, and stick with that. Number two, number two and number two. Okay, so 
Number two or number one is repent. Number two is obey. Number three is faith. We've got to have faith in ourselves. I'm motivated because I've got faith in myself. I'm motivated because I've got faith in God. And my motivation in God drives me, catapults me, moves me, and keeps me focused on my next level in the name of Jesus. I love music, so I heard the words level up. That's my favorite exercise song. When I was able to go exercising, I will not be talking about my uh <laughs> my bad knees. I have two bad knees right now, so and I'm not gonna talk about that right now. But um what motivates you? What's your motive? What is your motive? So I'm here to tell you this. Let's go to Psalms 37, Psalms 37. So we're going to repent. Number one, we are going to uh, obey. Number three, we're going to have faith. Number four, we're going to have love in our hearts. Um, number five, we're going to have, uh, number five is prayer. Number six is praise. Number seven is worship. So with our motives. We're going to talk about motives and prayer. Motives and prayer. See, my motives through prayers will come to life, okay? So in Psalms 37 and 4, it says, Fret not thyselves because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. So when I turn on the television and I see things that are going on on TV, you know, um, you know, I mean, I, I watch a whole lot of stuff. So uh, you know, if I'm watching, let's say I'm watching the Marvel superhero comics or whatever. So if I'm watching this comic book show, I know that the drugs selling guns or certain things that they're doing inside of these situations are not the most conducive thing. Okay. And I know that the, the things that are manifesting are not things that I should emulate, emulate. So even though these people are living a glamorous life, I know that I need to pray like, Lord, okay, what is, what is this something that I could do in my scope of practice that's not going to put me, my family, or my children or in harm's way or lead me to uh, drugs or disease or being hooked? on something in the long run or being in an early grave, okay? So it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious uh, against the workers of iniquity. All money is not good money. I'm about to talk about money matters and the church in the very near future. Money matters and the church because tithing is a law. And if you go to the book of Deuteronomy 14, you will see that the tithes was not money and that it was animals and the money went to the Levites and the priests so that they could take care of the community. It was not for basically personal gain. The ones who take it in per as personal gains, gain is like Hophni, Phineas, Eli, and them who took the money, used it for their own purposes, and used the things for things that were not lining up with the word of God, the will of God, and the purpose that God had the tithes taken up in the first place. So the tithes was usually wine, meat, uh, herbs, uh, animal, livestock, things of that nature. That's what tithing was about in the Old Testament. So a lot of people's motives regarding ministry might be a little bit off kilter. And if you go into the book of, I believe it's first, first or second Corinthians 9 and 18, Paul says, and, you know, he basically tells you, I don't take money for ministry because then I'm taking the gospel, you know, uh, basically I'm misusing it. OK, so I don't put a price tag on what I do for God is what Paul says. And so, you know, and when I was reading that scripture, I, you know, in a still voice, I could hear the words. They have their rewards with them. You know, so God literally when you have the heart to serve him genuinely, a lot of times you will see things that people are doing and you just have to be prayerful. I'm one of these Lord help them type people. I see so much stuff and I'll be like, Lord help them. And the Holy Spirit in a still voice will ease and comfort my spirit and say, you know what, Sharita, they have the Bible and listen here, 
You need to stop stressing yourself out because they did not read it. They did not utilize it and they did not implement it. They saw what other folks were doing and they had different motives. OK, so I'm going to leave that there and talk about that when I do Money Matters and the church. But that's going to be at another time. It says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the earth. So I'm going to read uh, verses one through five, Psalms 37, and then I'm coming to a close for the night. It says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquities. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the earth green herbs trust in the lord and do good so thou shalt dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart commit thy ways unto the lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass okay see my motives is to get focused on god so that i can say god I want, and how do we get it? I want, okay? Because the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So we're about to learn some biblical principles in the name of Jesus tonight because the Lord is my shepherd. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to delight in him, delight in him, and I'm going to commit my ways to him and I'm going to trust in him because he is going to bring it to pass. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. See, I'm focused on the Lord because he says, seek and ye shall find, ask and ye shall receive, knock and the door shall open. Hallelujah, somebody. So I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in the cities. I'm blessed in the goings. I'm blessed in my comings. My daughter is blessed. The fruit of my womb is blessed. My business is blessed. Hallelujah. My health is blessed. My mind state is blessed because I am trusting in the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I shall not lack in anything because my motive, hallelujah, is to please God. Hallelujah. My motive is to serve God. Okay. My motive is to submit my authority to God because he said the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Psalms 23 says, and my cup runneth over. See, I've got some blessings, some healing, deliverance, some restoration. I've got some comfort waiting for me in the balance because my motive, hallelujah, today is in the Lord. My trust today is in the Lord. I am committed today to the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. So I'm not going to fret myself over what I see on television today. I'm not going to fret myself over what I hear on the radio today. I'm not going to fret myself about what What's going on in the community today? See, my heart is not going to be heavy about this over here today. I'm not going to sit back and daydream because my motive, hallelujah, is to live and to have life and to have life more abundantly because that's what the Bible says that I am entitled to. I'm entitled to have life. Hallelujah. I'm entitled to have life more abundantly. Hallelujah. So I'm about to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. In all thy ways, I'm going to acknowledge him so that he can direct my path because the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. And I shall not want. So I'm going to get back up and I'm going to uh, I'm going to say this, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say, Lord, my motive is to serve you first, first and foremost. Hallelujah, somebody. But in the meantime and in between time, my spirit is open for the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. To come in. Hallelujah. To come through. Hallelujah. So I can say, well, Lord, this is what it is that I want to do. It says the life thyself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So I'm motivated to be motivated to be motivated to have my motives focused on the things of God. My motive is to serve and please God. Hallelujah. Because I in Deuteronomy, it says I'm going to be blessed in every area of my life. So let me get totally committed to him that has sent me. Okay. Somebody. Hello, somebody. Because see, 
You can have a ministry that is pressed down, shaken and overflowing, but God will bless you. Hallelujah. In the marketplace, in your business, in your place of work so that it just is like second nature. Like I get up, I'm so blessed today and I'm so highly favored and I'm just so content. And so godliness with contentment is great gain. So sometimes you have got to not get too content in certain situations and circumstances because you can get content in a place of of lack and you don't want to do that. I've been there and I've done that. Like I got stuck at the bottom for a minute and I said, Lord, I got, I better come up swinging. I better come up fighting. Come on. You know, so I get on my face and I get to fighting on my knees in the morning. Like, Lord, I rebuke everything coming against me today in the name of Jesus. I rebuke distraction. Hallelujah. Somebody I rebuke Folks that are trying to be naysayers, I rebuke the words that are coming against me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. If you don't like me, that's too bad. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit then came through. The Holy Spirit then showed up and showed out. Since the Holy Spirit wanted to show up and show out today, I'm here to just share a little bit. Because it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. So to him that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let the things of God motivate you today. Let the things of God press you today. Let the things of God drive you today. Let the things of God, hallelujah, move you to become a catalyst in your life where you're going from blessing to blessing to blessing to blessing to blessing to blessing to blessing. blessing. So let repentance be your motive, hallelujah, to get to the blessing that is on the other side of God's forgiveness, hallelujah. Let the love of God be your motive, hallelujah, to the open doors that God has for you in your life. Let the love of God, let the faith, because see, faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. So I'm going to need for you to get up and have faith in God because God has faith in you. God has faith in your dreams. God has faith in your abilities. The Bible says in the book of Philippians, hallelujah, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So let the strength, the love, the joy, the peace, and the forgiveness of God be your motive to be successful today. Let that be your motive to be a good parent today. Let that be your motive to know that you're going to find your love, your joy, your peace and your happiness because your focus and your motive has become pleasing God and pleasing to God, which has become the breakthrough. And now the windows and the gates of heaven are now open in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to close out to say in the name of Jesus, through your positive motives, hallelujah, in Jesus, hallelujah, access is granted, hallelujah. So when you wake up tomorrow, hallelujah, get get your pen. I have a... Uh, uh, I don't have one of my notebooks right by me, but I have a Watch God uh, journal. You go to the Dollar Tree and get you a journal and while, while you're waiting on your uh, Watch God journal to ship to you. But you get you a journal. Put a journal and a pad and pencil beside your bed. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that God will give you new streams of income. Hallelujah. New ideas, new business plans, and new ways to make money. Hallelujah. And everybody's motive ain't money. Hallelujah. Some folks is out here looking for a relationship. Hallelujah. But I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That you will get so motivated by God and the things of God that you you will get on your face in the name of get on your face hallelujah not in your face but get on your face in the name of Jesus hallelujah somebody that you will get on your face not literally on your face but get down on your knees and pray because I don't want nobody to take certain things that I say uh, in an analytical perspective, literally. So I don't want nobody just literally on their face, prostate before God. Be prostate before God, but not just literally on your face, okay? But get down before God. You know, I have bad knees. So sometimes I sit on the floor, I will meditate. I can still fall across my leg, my knees. I have real bad inflammation. I have real bad arthritis in both of my knees. But I will get down on the floor and I will meditate before God 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, no tongue that rise against me that thou shalt not condemn. I thank you for the completion of my first book, my second book, my third book, my fourth book. I Thank you in the name of Jesus for my book that, that is to come next year and the year after that. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for the other ideas that I am working on in the name of Jesus right now. I thank you for, hallelujah, the press down, shaking and overflowing of them because these things, they come to me through my spirit and they always filtering through my spirit. And why am I so blessed? Because I'm so blessed because I wake up. It's like the songwriter say, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. And hallelujah, somebody. I am going to diligently work on, um, I have another book that I started writing so that I can nudge people, hallelujah, somebody in the name of Jesus to another level of success in their life. So I am going to work diligently on getting that book done because my goal, my objective in life is to not just thrive for myself, but as I thrive and as God blesses me and as God shows me things, my job is to share whatever it is that he gives to me, through me, to everybody, okay? Because the blessing of prophecy is not just given just for a person to just sit there and say, boom, 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 me, 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 me. Mm -mm. It's not by power, nor by might. OK, nor by my spirit. You'll never catch my cash app popping up. Hallelujah. Not when it comes down to prophetic nuggets and things of that nature, because I don't want my reward. Hallelujah. To be based on revenue. OK, I don't want it to be based on that. Now, if I sell a million books, that's one thing. And glory to God in the name of Jesus in that capacity. But it won't be because I'm charging anyone for the word of God that comes through me. OK, and if you want to find out how to sow into Say Yes, you will have to watch Say Yes on Thursday nights on the Now Network at 930 p.m. at 930 p.m. on Thursday, or you will have to find an episode on the internet. I do have a few episodes that are on the internet. So you would have to find out how to sow into Say Yes through Say Yes. But a prophetic nugget, I don't, I just don't. I just don't. I don't even do a love offering for my Sunday ministry. So at this point, because I do it at home, and uh, period. So Read Psalms 37, be blessed, know that God loves you, know that I love you, know that this was only supposed to be 20 minutes and ended up 36 minutes. So remember, if you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. There's a blessing on the other side of your yes. Let your motive be God and let the motive in God motivate you to be all that you can be because you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. So get out of Pride, hallelujah. Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Heart is the way of the transgressor. So I'm here to tell you, get your minds and rights, minds and hearts right. Get your minds and your hearts right in the name of Jesus and through Jesus Christ. And I am coming to a conclusion tonight because I'm here to tell you that I got a little bit excited while I was doing this because the word motive came. But then the Holy Spirit started to flow once I found the scripture because I just said, Lord, I got to have a word for the people because I dedicated myself. I said every Sunday I'm getting up and I'm ministering every Sunday. I'm getting up and ministering every Sunday. I don't care if it's for 10 minutes, I am ministering. So I've got to go. I've stayed longer than I choose to. Remember that. Let the things of God motivate you. Fret not yourself because of evildoers and neither be thou envious. For in due season, they shall be cut down and they shall wither like the grass. So delight yourself in the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord and trust in the Lord and know that he's going to give you the desires of your heart and he is going to bring all things to pass. So just trust in God. Okay. Just trust in God today because I don't want to lose nobody, especially now my, I, I believe all babies and little kids is gone. Okay. So to heaven anyway, but uh, grown ups, y'all got some work to do. I got some work to do. So let's get it. Let's be blessed. Let's thrive. Let's commit our ways unto the Lord and let us be motivated. Let us be motivated. Let's become motivated by God. Not what we see on TV, not what we hear on the radio. And, 
you know, my TV binge is over. My television binge is over. I was binging on, I'm just going to tell them myself, I was binging on Marvel Comics. Yes, I was binging on Marvel Comics, okay? But that binge is over. The binge is over. Okay, so God bless you. I love you. Prophetess Sharita signing out.